What's up everyone? Eddie Mercado here with BloodyElbow.com and I'm about to speak with the 9 and 5 silent assassin Vicente Luque as he is set to take on Hector Urbina at UFC Fight Night 95 in Brazil on September 24th. So let's give him a call and find out how it feels to get back-to-back -back submissions in the UFC and his thoughts on returning to Brazil. Ah, Mr. Vicente Luque, how are you, sir? Hey, how are you? I'm good. I, I'm well, I'm well. Thank you for taking out the time to speak with me. I assume you are in uh, South Florida right now? Or are you yeah, in yeah, uh, Brazil? Yeah. yeah, I'm in Florida. I'm in. I'm training here at Black Philly. Okay, awesome. Now, you're 9-5 right now. You're on a tear. Two back-to-back -back finishes in the UFC. One by Anaconda, one by Dars. I mean, that has to feel good, right? How does it feel? Yeah, it feels really good. I feel like I have the momentum going now. I feel like I'm growing a lot and evolving a lot in the game. So it feels really good, and I'm trying to take all that, that I can from this moment and try to, try to fight as much as I can and get all those wins. Awesome. Now, your first 12 professional fights were in Brazil, and shortly after that... Uh, did you come to the Black Zillion specifically for the Ultimate Fighter show, or it just kind of happened that way? Well, after my 11 first fight, I had a friend here that trained here, uh, Guto Inocente. He used to fight in the UFC. And so, like, I wanted to train somewhere. So I talked to him. I got in touch with him. He said that I could come up here and, and train in, in Black Zillions and everything. So I came here beginning of 2014. That's the first time I came here. That's when they got to know me and everything. And that's why they called me for the show later on in, in beginning of 2015. Okay, awesome. Now, what were your thoughts on, on the show as a whole? I mean, you know, every fight's like kind of short notice. It's kind of a weird atmosphere. What were your thoughts on the TV show? You know, it's it's a different experience for sure. I mean... You you don't know when you're gonna fight and you are and that diet and like I fight at 170 so for me to fight in short notice at 170 it's, it's hard so I had to keep a really strict diet especially being able to order whatever I could inside the house so that was kind of hard and we had a couple of guys on my team that they fight 155 so they really didn't need to diet that much so it kind of was like that was the hardest part and that was kind of you know, I, I got kind of sick of that later, and when I got out of the house, I got like really heavy eating, all, a whole bunch of kind of crazy stuff. But then I got back on track after a while. But it, it's a crazy experience. I mean, being in the house and, and living with the guys you're gonna fight with, having to see them every day, it's, it's different, but you learn a lot of stuff. You know, you, you learn how to be more professional about it and how to be more intelligent on the fight and not take it so personal. Okay. Now, your actual UFC debut was against Michael Graves. It was um, a grapple-heavy bout, not a, not a whole lot of striking involved. What was your kind of assessment on getting your actual first UFC fight under your belt? Yeah, well, that, it was, I mean, I did not expect for it to go so much on the ground. I had trained a lot of wrestling defense. But he went there and, and did his game. We did expect him to come for the takedowns, but I thought that I was going to defend those takedowns. And I was surprised during the fight. He was really on point with the wrestling. And he has shown it on his later fights that he, he's really developing a lot of, on that game. So I think I was caught on that. And my plan was to strike the whole fight in the in the last round i think i got too much on trying to, to get the, the anaconda the dars i should have switched maybe click on the back and and look for a rear, rear naked choke something like that but i just wanted to get that win so bad at the moment i couldn't think that too much so after that like i try to get that first fight out of the way and just really train hard and, and get in a, in a good mindset to go into my next fights calm and, and fight intelligent and take advantage of what I'm strong in. Okay, now, if we back up for a second, the Ultimate Fighter Season 21, you lost a very close split decision to Hader Hassan. 
Now, your second official fight in the UFC was the rematch, and you got your your sweet, sweet justice by technical submission, anaconda choke, your bread and butter. How did that feel? Well, that felt really good. I mean, that fight, it wasn't only, like, the first fight wasn't only that it was so close, and I believe I won the fight. It also was, like, the last fight in the show, and it was during, like, those the, the 200,000 that were for the house. It was all in that fight. So, you know, I think I took that fight and they didn't give it to me. So I wanted to go out there and prove that I could finish that fight without having to leave it on the hands of the judges. So I trained really hard for that and, and it worked out for me. And it could have could have not been better than that. I mean, it was great. Okay, now, of course, you put him to sleep with an anaconda choke. Next fight, Alvaro Herrera, you went to the other side and got him with a darce. What yeah. is it about these holds? I mean... And, and what makes you kind of prefer the anaconda, which is, you know, as opposed to the Darce, which is under the armpit, you kind of prefer the anaconda more so. Why is that? You know, it's not that I really prefer it more, but, like, it's harder to get. The anaconda is harder to get, so people don't defend it as well. They kind of think that it's not going to work. And I, I've always had very good, like, I, it always worked a lot for me, both anaconda and Darce. And I, I really don't try to look for it too much on the fights. It, I try to leave it kind of natural. Like, if you see in the third round against against Graves, I kind of forced it too much. So that's why I think it didn't work. And on my other fights, I actually wasn't looking for it. Like, against Alvaro and, and Hyder, I wasn't looking for it. It just showed up. I saw the opening, and I got it. So it's just something I train a lot, and it's easy for me. And I try to go for it when I see it, but I don't try to overcommit to it because if I overcommit, like, you, you waste too much time on that. And I, I like the Anaconda because it's something that people don't expect to work, and it really works good for me. Okay, awesome. Yeah, it's definitely a, a slick maneuver. I, I like to see it. I like Darces. I like Anacondas. I think they're both very slick, and, and a lot of people don't see them coming. Yeah, um, but yeah so, you know, afterwards, after the fight, you, you say, hey... I want to I want to fight in Brazil and they gave it to you. I mean, what is it what are your emotions like right now like knowing you're headed back to Brazil and and when was the last time you were actually there? You know, uh it's a great opportunity to fight there. It's not only going to be in Brazil, but it's going to be in Brasilia. That's where I grew up. Uh I was born in New Jersey, but when I was 6 years old, I moved to Brasilia and that's where I grew up. I studied all my life, all my friends are there. So it's really special for me to fight over there, and it's kind of way to thank everybody that supported me from really the beginning. And I I actually still live there, so I kind of live there and back and forth. So the last time I was there was maybe like a month ago. I was there, and I, I also train when I'm there. I have a team that I train over there. So, you know, it's it's just great, and I'm, I'm really excited for my fight. It just makes me train much harder and want to go there and put on a show. You know, I don't want to just go there and win. I want to go there and win in an impressive fashion. Okay. Now, are you worried at all about the added distractions? You know, everybody in the world that knows you is going to be asking for tickets and hitting you up and, you know, it's going to be a lot. You know, uh, I try to keep myself from that a little bit. And who really helps me a lot is my girlfriend. We've been together now for maybe like eight years. Oh, wow. And she helps me a lot with that. I just, whoever my friends come talk to me, I just, hey, go talk to her and she'll figure everything out. So I, that's why I like also to come over here because I can just take my mind out of stuff and just think of the fight. Okay, awesome. Now, what are your thoughts on your opponent, Hector Urbina? 17-9-1, kind of a, a bit of a mixed record. He was on the Ultimate Fighter 19. What, do you, what are your thoughts on the guy? Yeah, well, what I just like me, you know, I have a record also that if you look at it, maybe I'm not, I don't look like a great fighter. So I don't look so much at the records. I look at the fights, and I think he's a dangerous opponent. He is a really complete guy. He can go stand up or he can do the ground game as well. So I'm really preparing all the aspects of MMA, and I'm going to focus on striking. That's what I've started doing since the beginning. I started in Muay Thai, 
So that's going to be the, the game plan, go out there and strike. But I'm going to be ready as well if, if he wants to take me to the ground. I'm going to work the ground as always. I mean, I, I've trained that for so many years, so I'm, it's also like on point. So I think it's going to be a good fight. He's a dangerous guy, and he really looks to finish the fight as well as I do. So I think there's no way it's going to go three rounds. Okay. Now, you know, like you said, your your background's in Muay Thai, and, you know, you grew up in Brazil. And, and really, jiu-jitsu is, like, the big thing in Brazil. So, I mean, what kind of happened to where you were like, hey, I want to go the striking route. I don't, I don't really want to do the grappling right now. Yeah, well... My first contact with fighting was at three years old because my mother is a black belt in karate, so she put me to train karate. And, like, I liked karate a lot. I trained it and all. But I later on, I wanted to stop training because when, like, training as a kid, they don't let you have so much contact, especially, like, I trained Shotokan in Brazil and other kinds of stuff, so there wasn't too much contact. So I kind of got out of that. And then I did other sports. I did soccer. I did a lot of other sports in Brazil. And I've always had, like, I always did a lot of contact and got in trouble because of that. So later on, I said, no, I want to I wanna learn how to fight, you know. So it was it was a time where MMA was, was growing and also K1 was growing. So everybody was with kickboxing and Muay Thai. So I wanted to look for a gym. So I told my mom, hey, I want to I wanna train Muay Thai. She said, okay. Let's look for it, and, and I found one. I watched a lot of Shogun, Vandalay, also Vitor Belfort, and I always liked the striking. So I always liked to watch striking, so that's why I wanted to train. Okay. Time. Yeah, now, what do you kind of attribute to your composure to? I mean, you're only 24, yet, I mean, you kind of have this presence in there, like you've been doing it, well, I guess you have been doing it your whole life, but you really just have this kind of, you're supposed to be there, kind of natural. You don't really get rattled too much by things. You're not real flinchy out there. I mean, where does that come from? You know, a lot of people ask me that, and, and I don't really know how to say where it com comes from. It's just, I don't know, I've always been really calm about fighting, and sometimes I think it's about what the reason I fight. And I don't fight because, like, I fight because I love fighting, so I don't have an enemy when I'm fighting there. So I'm not angry, and I'm not. I'm mostly excited and happy for being in fighting. So I think that just makes me calm and makes me look at the fight as a competition, and as wanting to be better than the other guy, but in a in a tactical way, not exactly like oh I want to beat this guy because whatever you know. Like other guys have rage in them, I, I don't. I can fight with the guy and right after be best friends with the guy, you know. So I think that's what really makes me calm, and I've always been like this. And I've also, like, many people think, like, because I'm young, I'm not experienced, but I started fighting MMA when I was 17. So I've been fighting for a, for a while, so I, I do think I'm not the most experienced guy out there, but I have enough experience to to look at the fight like, like a kind of a veteran in the sport. Okay. Now, how's your training camp going for this? What's life like down with the Black Zillions? Yeah, training camp is going really good. I mean, every time I come here, I'm able to push myself very hard. And all the training partners, I think that's the biggest thing here, sparring all these guys. And, I mean, everybody that comes here knows sparring at Black Zillions is different. We really make a fight out of it. Everybody goes hard, and everybody's trying, like, maybe to even to get a bonus here. There's no bonus, but, like, we're thinking about that, you know? So we go hard, and... and it's just great. It's I'm feeling ready. Way is going down, and everything's going really good. Okay, now how long before you head out to Brazil to get ready out there? Yeah, I go I go back to Brazil one week before the fight. I actually what I do is like I I have ten weeks camp, four weeks I do in Brazil in the beginning, and then my last six weeks I do over here, and then I go out to my fights because the UFC gets us like a, a week before the fight, they take us there. And that's anyway, there isn't much training that week, just moving around so that the weight goes down and that's it. Okay. Now, what is your prediction for the bout, Hector Urbina? How do you see it playing out? Well, I think we're going to start out striking. He likes to come out and strike. I'm going to feel out a little bit what's he what he's going to bring. 
and then I'm going to try to go out there and knock him out for sure. That's what I'm going to try. Okay. Now, let's say you do that. You go out, spectacular, fast knockout. What would you want after that? Well, I don't know exactly what I want, but I want to like I want to fight before the end of the year or in the beginning of next year. If I am able to get out of the fight healthy to fight again, definitely I would I would love to fight again. And I don't know, maybe fight somewhere like I would like to fight somewhere near near New Jersey, you know, maybe New York, but I know you New York is too too close up now. But th- th- I think they're going to have another card maybe in December, but I'm not sure. Uh, up in New York? I don't know. I would yeah. like to fight over there for, for... I have. I still have a lot of family. My dad lives in New Jersey. I have uncles, my grandpa. So I would love to fight somewhere near New Jersey so that everybody could go out there and see me. Okay. Awesome. Now, you got any shout-outs or people you want to give a thanks to? Well, just thanks to everybody that always helped me and supports me. And... I'm really blessed to be where I am now, so I wanted to thank God also for all that he has given me, and that's it. Awesome. Now, how can people follow you along on your journey? What are your Twitter handles, your Instagram? How sure, people... they can follow me. My Twitter is Vicente Luque MMA. My Instagram is Luque Vicente, and, all, and Facebook, I have a Facebook page. It's just my name, Vicente Luque, and they can follow me there. Awesome. Well, Vicente Luque, thank you so much for taking out the time. Big fight on your hands, UFC Fight Night 95 in Brazil, September 24th. Hector Urbina is on your plate. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Take care, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good one. You too. So there you have it. The 9-5 Vicente Luque set to take on Hector Urbina at UFC Fight Night 95 in Brazil. That's going to be on September 24th. Go check it out if you happen to be in Brazil. Until then, read me on bloodyelbow.com. Follow me on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado, And go be a good person.